And some of you are going, what on earth was that all about? <laughs> Love After Marriage Seminar. Yeah. Would, would everybody stand who attended the Love After Marriage Seminar? These, all these couples attended, okay? And um, I'm going to ask Jeff and Lynn and Brandon and Sheila if you'd come up and just give us a real quick. We spent from Wednesday night through last night 36 hours working on our marriages. And um, there were powerful, powerful transformations that took place. 19 couples, 11 of which were from Seattle Revival Center, um, attended and um, life transformation. Ivan and Debbie Laughlin, would you stand? Yeah. They were our facilitators for the Nothing Hidden Ministries Love After Marriage Seminar, and uh, the presence of God was just powerful. In fact, our financial team meeting this morning said, you know, they came in and they said, wow, do you feel what's, what's going on here? You know, they could feel in, in the air what was happening, you know, the, the, the atmosphere that remained. So anyway, I, I, I don't want to take away from these guys. So uh, Jeff and Lynn, would you share with us what God did? Glory to God. Um, <clears throat> quick analogy. Uh, I've, I've been a jeweler for 45 years, and one of the things that's always amazing to me is when people bring in jewelry that, uh, that, that, that needs to be checked. So I, I take and I bring it back into my shop area, and I, I clean it, and I put a little polish on it, and then I bring it back out to the counter, and they're amazed at they say, you know, this, this didn't look this good. I, I can't remember it ever looking this good. It looks like a new ring. Well, you know what? That's what the marriage encounter did. It, it cleaned us up. It put a new polish on us. It never looked. I can't remember it looking this good. So we, we, uh, we sharpened some skills. Um, we, we, got some, we got some new tools in our toolbox. Um, <laughs> found a few tools that we had forgotten to put back in the toolbox and um, even, even received a miracle healing uh, in yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> yeah. so in order to honor my wife we have to keep this short and, and she said there would be consequences if I didn't let her speak so <laughs> This couple down here, uh, Debbie and uh, Ivan, hosted the Holy Spirit. So this had structure to it because we were there from Wednesday night till last night. So there's structure. But how do you have structure and the Holy Spirit? They hosted it. And I want to learn it. I want to learn it because you know what it brings? It brings life. It brings life. Here's an example of it, just so I, you get a, a, an idea. Um, you've got a gripe. You've got something that's really hurting inside, and you want to tell this person. You know, you're hurting. Something's not right. And so you try it. You say it, and it blows up. And they're offended, and you're offended. And, and away you go into that piece of jewelry that's got a little bit more grime on it. You love each other. You're committed to Jesus Christ, but you just don't get it. And then another owie comes up, and pretty soon you're on the edge of the bed. And we all know, you know that one, don't you? Um, and you don't know how to bring it back together. And uh, they brought the Holy Spirit who talked to his heart and my heart, and how to, they gave us instructions on how to say it. That I get to say to Jeff, you know, I just don't feel heard. I don't feel listened to. I... I and I got to just dump it all out. But if I had just dumped it all out at home, um, it would have blown up. And the other half of that is that is that the Lord gave me the heart to feel the pain that she goes through when she's not heard, and 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 I'm I'm not I'm not listening to her, and that's amazing. And its results are amazing. I mean. <laughs> You 
you guys don't know what we're talking about. You, you, do they? You do? We're talking about sex. And I, and I know it's, I know it's touchy and I'm not just, I'm, I'm not trying to make fun or light of it, but they, this, this seminar showed the importance of it. Of entering, of, of inviting the Holy Spirit, Spirit into every single aspect of your life, yeah. including the bedroom. You're lying in bed, you invite the Holy Spirit in, sounds just bizarro, there's three of you in bed, no. <laughs> but, but it was there and um, Jesus healed me, Jesus healed me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Brandon and Sheila. Hi. Ladies first. <laughs> my name is Sheila, and this is my husband, Brandon Romero. Um, before we came into Love After Marriage, uh, six months ago, we were actually going through uh, marriage counseling. So we got married very quickly. It's, uh, we felt like we skipped a lot of that premarital counseling, so we got into this point where we felt like we were playing catch-up. And um, we got to a point about six months ago, we weren't getting any breakthroughs, so we were dealing with a lot of that junk, of that negative spirit that was coming and, and, and taking over our marriage. There was a spirit of death, spirit of betrayal, and just spirit of mistrust that was taking over our marriage and uh, we weren't getting any breakthroughs at all and we got to a point where um, we actually walked out of the counseling and we were so we were sort of confused we felt like I think we just got kicked out they just told us to go somewhere else <laughs> so we just looked at each other and it was like oh my gosh we literally just said we're we're screwed <laughs> we're just screwed <laughs> So we just walked out of there, just um, although they prayed hope over us, we just felt a lot of doubt, and we didn't feel hopeful towards our future. And um, we just kind of, we just walked into this dark place in our life where there's a lot of that spirit that we were battling over. And it was just uh, the grace of God that just allowed us to received those breakthroughs in our life and just kind of revealed a lot of the lies that we were facing and just break through that, those lies. And um, yeah, we were just so grateful. And um, about a month and a half ago, um, Brandon told me about the lamb marriage thing. And I was sort of nervous to sign up for it because um, we've only been married for less than two years that I was sort of afraid, what can we offer in this ministry? Um, I just find it very surprising that um, you know, I just I had this pre notion or preconceived notion that everybody around me is just perfect. So when I walked into that table in my group, I'm just like I have nothing to offer these people. <laughs> and after hearing their testimony, I was just really surprised. I was like, when it became my turn to share my story, I was like, I feel like I'm going to take a lot of time because. Every bit of your story, all your story is part of my story. And I was able to relate to every single one in the table. Given that, I was able to minister and they're able to minister to me. And it was just, it reminded me of this verse from Proverbs 27, the, the iron sharpens iron. We're able to just sharpen each other's marriages. And, um, and it just allowed that, that, that safety atmosphere for us to be vulnerable and um, and just be honest with each other. And this Love After Marriage ministry just gave us some very powerful tool that we were sort of been exposed to, but we never really took the time to practice it. Because in the heat of the argument, in the heat of the moment, we were just, it's just so easy to throw that piece of paper away. <laughs> so in, in that atmosphere just created that safe atmosphere for us to just practice it and just be honest with each other. Um, yeah, it just, it just gave us a really powerful tool. Awesome. All right. So I'm normally the talker. <laughs> so I think she basically took all the ideas and bottled them all up. So I'm done. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, no, but really, um, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy or the other way around. But basically through the testimonies of everybody at our table and through our testimony, we were able to share Jesus with each other. 
it, we were able to be intentional where we had heard a lot of things or you hear you make mentor with a couple for a while or you may hear something from somebody that's like oh just go implement this and you're like well that sounds easy it's like a one step process to fix everything and it just really doesn't work so having the time to intentionally go in and like it's almost like surgery like they like um like they were talking about where you just don't recognize it because the the jewelry's become like dirty or your relationship has these problems and you just think well, it seems like it should just be a, a little bit of polish right here, and it should be it should be fine again. But it really took us out of our out of our environment and allowed us to be intentional about everything. So that's kind of what I, wa I just want to say is is that um, get, if you get the chance to go through something like this, or you, if you feel like you're struggling, I know they were talking about there's some e-courses too, but. Um, just basically getting out of, out of the environment where you're in your home and everything is just day to day. Okay, here's a problem. You know, we're going to argue about this, or this is going to become a blow up. Getting out of that that stress and that environment, it it took us out of, out of that place where we were really able to allow the Holy Spirit to minister to us. So. Awesome. Bless you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Isn't that incredible? And there were last night there were 19 testimonies like that from the 19 couples that were there. Uh, it was just powerful, the life change that occurred uh, during that time. $330 sounds like a lot, but boy, I, I think every one of these couples will say it was worth every penny and more. And, uh, you know, uh, we're just believing God to uh, give us more opportunities to see healing in marriages like this. And healthy marriages bring healthy families, bring a healthy church, bring a healthy world. Amen? Amen. Pastor Darren, would you welcome him as he comes? you guys. You guys are so nice. In the first and second service, just made me blush both times. You never get used to it. All right, if you got your Bibles, let's go. Um, Book of Acts, chapter one. Um, we're beginning a new series uh, that'll take us about two years to complete. We're in the book of Acts. Um, it's a series that we're calling Engaging Heaven, Transforming Earth. And I want to give you some uh, context uh, for this and where, where it came from. So, um, my pastor, Pastor Gail, who was here in the, in the first service, um, returned back to the church here in about 2000, 2001. Uh, actually, around 2000. So, uh, at that time, when she returned back to the church here, it, was, it wasn't called Seattle Revival Center, okay? Um, there was about 20 people left of the church. They weren't meeting in this room. They were actually meeting in the chapel, which is just right across uh, 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 the way that where, our, where our students are meeting right now. And um, uh, when Gail came back here, uh, there was just a lot of heartbreak, a lot of uh, hope deferred um, uh, within, within the church. Now, uh, the reason why she came back is because while she was in Australia, the Lord spoke to her. And said, I'm not done there yet. I have a harvest in store for that place. And so when she came back here, she came back here with, uh, with the desire to host revival and to see it lead into harvest. But when she returned here, this place wasn't a revival center. Um, it was called New Beginnings because that's what you call a church that goes through a traumatic experience. In fact... Um, there was a period of time when the sign, Seattle Revival Center, was being thrown away by John Shada. And uh, uh, because the new pastors had come in, we're going to call it New Beginnings. There's not going to be a trace of any sort of revival here. We'll show, you know. And um, as he was throwing the sign into the dumpster, the Lord spoke to him and said, This dumpster is like a tomb. And uh, I'm going to resurrect uh, Seattle Revival Center. And so when Gail came back, she changed the name back from, uh, from New Beginnings to Seattle Revival Center. Except this time, it wouldn't be a parachurch. It wouldn't be three churches coming together. This time, it would be a local church. And there would be leaders here from all three of those core churches back in the 90s. So even now, we have leaders, a part of our church here, from Freedom Life Center, the International Church, Lakebourne Christian Center, and we have all kinds of incredible leaders here, even from River Glory that became the loft, and, uh, 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 and that is one church, Seattle Revival Center. 
when she came back, she um, put a, a large mission statement on the wall. And it, it, was, it was long. In fact, I don't really remember what it says. But I can, I can give you the gist of it. Because it was a vision. It was a mission. It was purpose. It was values. All in one gigantic sentence. And it was something along the lines that Seattle Revival Center exists um, to create a platform for apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists. And within the context of the community, we will take care of the needs of the poor and the widow and the orphan. Um, and we will raise up a people that will go to the nations. And so she had that printed up and put on the wall. That was out in the hallway. If you come into this sanctuary, because, and immediately Gail's like, we got to get into, we got to get in. I don't care how many people we have. We might only have 10 people. We're going to get back into the room, this room here. And she put a banner above the door, and the banner said, you are loved. And that banner was referred to by Pastor Gail every single Sunday. Every single Sunday at the end of her message, she'd say, you are gorgeous, and you are absolutely loved. And I don't know when it happened. It took years. But at a certain point, we got it. It was like, at a certain point, there was like this revelation of, I'm loved. <laughs> I, like, I'm loved. Like, God, God really digs me. God really thinks I'm cool. And this church digs me. Whoa. When I, when I came back here, I, I was a train wreck. And because I knew performance, I came back to this church and just went right into religious performance, putting on a great exterior show. But my interior show was pathetic at best. And I thought I was putting on a good game, but everybody knew. Everybody knew what was going on. And what they do? They rebuked me. <laughs> no, no, no. No. They shunned me. No, no, no. They loved, they, they, they just loved me. What is this thing? What is this thing that we're a part of where when you deserve punishment, when you deserve wrath, instead God shows up and kisses you on the lips? What is that? That's grace. So we started saying it everywhere. In our emails, in our services, everywhere. You are love. You are love. And people ask me, I, I, young pastor, Pastor Dare, what's the vision here? Vision is, are you ready? You are loved. And people are like, okay, that's beautiful. I, but, yeah, but what, where, where are we going? I just told you. You are loved. So, and, and when it comes to vision, let me just say this. Like, I've always been full of vision. <laughs> Bloated with vision. In fact, before I even became a pastor, I, I created the Darren Stott Manifesto. Which was exactly that. It was a huge document. A lot of the elders are here in the service. Huge document. Red folder. I give it out to everybody. I remember uh, J James Thomas was sitting um, uh, in one of our elders meetings. And he looked at it. He's like, this is a lot. <laughs> and even then, Walter would ask me in the elders meeting, okay, so Darren, where are we going? What's the vision? I'm like, dude, you got the manifesto. What do you mean where we're going? You are loved. So we created this statement a few years back. The statement was this. This is where we're going. We exist. We're creating atmospheres where God shows up. So why do you do home groups? We're creating atmospheres where God shows up. Why are you doing um, children's ministry? Creating atmospheres where God shows up. Why do you have a job to pay the bills and to create atmospheres right, where, 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 where God shows up? That, that we're, that, that's the way we're thinking. That's where we're going. We, we want to see this, this place where, where, um, where heaven and earth are engaging and, and, and doing life together, right? Well, then all of a sudden, it's like God showed up, and God has continued to show up. It's like, where are we going? What's the vision? Creating atmospheres where God shows up. Well, isn't that what we're doing? God just keeps showing up. He keeps showing up in our heart. He showed up this last week. We started all these marriages. Like, yeah, God's showing up. He's going to continue showing up, but where are we going? So it's like, great. That, that vision didn't last very long. How I many of you know that's a good problem when you have a vision, and then all of a sudden you've got to keep revising it, because it's like, we're living the vision. Now what? What are you, all right, here's a question for you. All right, what are you visioneering right now? What are you working on? What are you hosting in your heart? Are you writing it down? You know, Habakkuk said, don't declare the vision. Don't speak the vision. He said, you got to write it down, which is why we gave you your vision journal. Everyone hold it up. Show me your journals. Everyone got journals? Do you know why you got journals? Because I love journals. I love, 
I've been hooked on a digital journal for the last couple of years. And then um, through a coaching process, I was encouraged, no, you got to get back to analog journaling. Analog journaling is just paper. I'd forgotten what paper was. You know, Anthony was up here. Yeah, did Anthony do a good job last Sunday? Yeah. Anthony was up here with paper. I was like, what's paper? He had his notes on paper. You know, I got enough, enough on that. What are you working on? What are you visioneering? Guys, this is what I want you to do. Throughout the course of this year, I want you to be listening to the Lord, and I want you to be exporting that data from here, from here, onto paper. You do that for me? Yeah? Some of you, uh, how many dreamers do we have here? You're dreaming? Oh, a lot of you. All right, that makes sense. All right. So some of you, if you're dreaming a lot, you're going to need to get a designated dream journal, okay? If you don't have that, you need need to get that because you need to begin stewarding what God's showing you. Amen? All right. Uh, so you got your journals, you're ready to go, and so all of a sudden we came into, where are we going? B- Darren, where are we going with the church? What's the vision? What's the vision? Oh, why do you keep asking that? What's the vision? Don't you know? No, where are we going? All right. So at, through this process, conversation, meeting with the team, uh, came out this beautiful statement. The statement was this, engaging heaven, transforming earth. Now, this is why I love it, because to a great degree, we're engaging heaven, aren't we? In our homes, we're hosting heaven. Yeah? And these classrooms right now. We're not babysitting your children. We're engaging heaven. Okay? But this is what I'm really excited about. I'm excited about developing in this house a theology for what happens when we engage heaven. Because how do you know that there's a blueprint of Christ Jesus and that blueprint embedded within it is love? It's love. It, his, that blueprint of heaven, the blueprint of Christ Jesus, it's dripping with love for this world. It's dripping with love for the very people that religion despises, for the very people that Pharisees would love to spit on. This blueprint is dripping. And where does it begin? Where does this origin story, this thing that we call Christianity, where does it begin? In the book of Acts. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to spend two years going through this heavenly blueprint. And then we're going to find our place in it. Because this is not just a historical record, okay? This is an invitation to begin engaging with Christ Jesus on the face of the earth for the purpose of redemption and restoration of people, places, and things. That means that if it's physical, it's redeemable. In stuff. In the first book of Theophilus, I've dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen, he presented himself alive to them after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but he waited them to wait. To wait for what? To wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you've heard from me, for John the, baptize, for John the Baptist baptized with water. That was great. But you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So, verse 6, when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. All right, guys, book of Acts, okay? Big book. Um, really, really big. And within this book, there are lots of characters. And it's kind of overwhelming, okay? Um, even right off the bat, okay, right off the bat, we got this book is authored by someone. Who is this book written by? This book is written by Luke, okay? And this letter is written to someone. The most excellent Theophilus as seen in Luke chapter 1, 3. So the book of Luke and the book of Acts was written to this 
Theophilus. That's referred to as the most excellent one, which is oftentimes how I'm referred to in emails. So he'd be like, dear most excellent Darren. And for those of you that do that, it's cool. That's, that's, you know, we're, we're tight. We're tight like that. And some of you just email me like, yo. Acts, because it's referring to the Acts of the Apostles. And then not only do we have that, but we have nations. And so we see um, Judea, uh, Samaria, right? All the way to the rest of the world. In fact, when we get into this book, it's going to be overwhelming. Because uh, as we see this, this very intimate, very intimate community of 12 that became a community of 120 shift into a movement of thousands almost overnight. And then tens of thousands and then... In fact, this thing is the fastest growing thing on the planet, and it breaks all the rules as far as what religion is. Okay? And so that's where we're going. You're going to be introduced to Paul, who is this very, very um, religious guy. Um, and so, like, he was like, you know, he was like a terrorist. He was so fanatical. He was such a zealot that if you, did, that if you were contradicting him, teaching something else, then, then this would be the guy that arrests you, maybe even kills you. All right, we're going to be looking at him. We're going to be looking at Peter. We're going to be looking at some very interesting, there's going to be a lot of characters. Okay? But let me tell you something, right off the bat. This is why I love the first eight verses. The first eight verses is what we're looking at. I chose these eight because these eight verses frame up the rest of the next two years. Like, and, and that's why this is such, this is absolutely an, an overwhelming text for me to even break down. Because it's like, how do I take all of this, these eight verses, and be able to break this down in a way that, that we can really kind of say, okay, I think I, I, think I, know, where, I, think I know where we're going. But um, by God's grace, we're going to attempt to break down the breakdown. Don't get distracted by these guys. Do you know why? Because the first eight verses are going to frame up one character, and this one character is, is the character, not just of this book, but of all the books of the Bible, and it is Jesus. Everybody say, Jesus. Jesus. When you read the book of Acts, the Acts is all about Jesus. It's all about the representation of the body of Christ on the face of the earth. This is all about Jesus and the gospel. The gospel is Jesus. Jesus is the gospel. The gospel is good news. When I ask my daughter, hey, Abigail, what's the gospel? She'll say the gospel is Jesus, and that's why it's good news. If you say, I don't know how to articulate the gospel, do you know one word, one name, the name above all other names? I don't know how to heal the sick. Remember this one name, Jesus. When you don't know how to pray, remember this one name. Jesus, when all of a sudden demons start popping up, and, you know, and somebody right in front of you, just remember this name, and you stink and say this name as though you are the king of everything. Jesus! Because he is the king of everything, and his spirit is not somewhere out there over the rainbow. His spirit, the holy, holy spirit, is inside of you. So, don't get distracted by crazy waves of doctrine that come from here and go there. Don't get distracted by new revelation. Don't get distracted by all these characters. Don't get distracted by, 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 by what you see on the news right now. Don't get distracted by what you see in the newspaper. Don't get distracted by what you see on Facebook right now. Because I am guessing the majority of us in this room, to some degree, we are a little distracted right now. Let's just be honest. In, in case you haven't noticed, things are a little bit crazy. Okay? And the reason for that is because the atmosphere that we live in within this country gets framed up by our natural government. And what we're looking at within the book of Acts is a group of people that were so excited about Jesus being the Messiah because they saw Jesus as a revolutionary who would overthrow Rome. Okay? who would overthrow Rome and usher in a new era of the kingdom of Israel. So here's the thing. 
that within this time, that when Jesus died, that was a major bummer for everybody that believed in him. Why? Because the new hope had died. That's like all the, all the Jedi Knights are now dead and, right? Okay, bad example. Okay, so stay, stay focused. When Jesus died, bad deal. Jesus is alive. Yay! Now, Jesus, is it time for the overthrowing of Rome? That Jesus, you came back to life, and now you're going to be here forever. forever. Jesus is going to live on this planet forever, and we're going to see this whole thing. It's about to go down. Are you tracking? Yeah? That's the context of, of, of this book. Now, let's look, at, let's look at, at, our eight, at our eight verses here. Verse 1. It's all about Jesus. It's all about what he did and taught. Verse 2. He came bringing commandments and instructions. And so, and where are those commandments and instructions? You see that right in verse 4 where it says, and he ordered them. Jesus came with these militant orders. This is after his resurrection. Jesus is hanging out, right? Pouring into these guys. And then we look at verse 3. For 40 days, he begins offering the proofs of his suffering. Evidence that he is who he says he is. Evidence that he is the Jesus who died and resurrected. So he's showing his wounds, right? He's hanging out with these guys. Why? Because these guys, they have to get it. They have to be able to say that we saw, we engaged with the resurrected Christ. Because these are now going to become legal witnesses, okay? That are about to go to some places declaring that Jesus died, yes, we saw it with our own eyes, but he also resurrected from the dead. So Jesus takes his time, the resurrected Jesus, for 40 days, he's teaching them, he's giving them commandments, and he's offering them proof, and in doing so, these experiences are, uh, are revolutionizing their identity, because they are about to walk in a new authority that's going to change the planet forever. And so as they're having these incredible encounters with, with Jesus, um, Jesus begins to set the stage for them. In verse 4, he says, don't leave. This is th these are the commandments. Guys, th this whole thing is changing. The world is changing. When I showed up on the planet, the planet changed. When I died, I knew, uh, and, I, and I went... Right, they don't know all, all the ramifications, but a new covenant was instated. This is a whole new world. The apostles had no idea what took place. They had no idea what was taking place. And they were framing up an outcome that was going to be radically different than the blueprint that the Father was holding in his own heart and was beginning to reveal through Jesus. We're talking about a major paradigm shift in what had been historically mostly referred to as Judaism. You guys tracking? This is what he says. You're going to need to, verse 4, you're going to need to wait for the promise of the Father. Verse 5, because baptism is coming. Baptism with what? With the Holy Spirit. The word here is baptizo, which means to dip or immerse. Luke 24, 49, Jesus says, you're going to stay in the city until what? Until you've been clothed with power from on high. Jesus knows what they don't know. He's about to leave. Dragon? Jesus knows what they don't know. You see, they got this mandate to go into all the nations and preach the gospel. Yay, awesome, and Jesus is going to be with us. Jesus knows what they don't know, that he's going to be leaving, but in his place, he's going to send God, the Holy Spirit, to come on them and then into them. The word filled in the Greek, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. We're going to see that word filled all throughout the book of Acts. The picture is this, a container, right, like a vase, and then having water poured into that container. That's the picture. You know what that's a picture of? Possession. That these people were about to be possessed with the 
spirit of Christ Jesus. Jesus knows that what is about to be accomplished on the earth would be limited if he stays in his physical form. So his physical form is going to have to leave. And the Holy Spirit is going to come so that every believer has... This is so radical. I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to find the right, right word choice. You know, if Jesus stayed here in physical form, Jesus can only be with one person at a time. So Jesus is in Italy, right? Jesus is in um, Michigan. Jesus is, you know, one person. Jesus leaves. He sends the Holy Spirit. And now God is in everyone. At the same time. Communicating, releasing power, authority, intel, operations, blueprints. Everything that you need to know. <coughs> Excuse me. Whoa. Whoa, I know Kung Fu. How'd that happen? So take all the goofy stuff from all the movies. All that fantasy realm stuff. We have the real heavenly technology. Jesus says, what you're, what you're about to do, your, your programs and your good ideas aren't going to be able to accomplish it. Like, what I am asking you to... Do you get, do you get this? Jesus is like... What I am calling for you to do is actually impossible for you. Hey, Seattle Revival Center, what God is calling for us to do is actually impossible for us. Yo, hey, Darren, hey, Darren, Darren, are you listening to yourself right now? Gosh, I think I am. Darren, what God has created for you to do is actually beyond you. Oh. Hey, Darren, all the people in the world aren't going to be able to help you come into what I have for you. They're, they're not? Darren, if you want to, if you want to see, if you want to step into the, the plans and purposes of God for your life, you're not going to be able to get, it's not about people. It's not, it's about the presence. It's about the presence of God. And Darren, are you, like this is super exciting. Nations, kings, anointings, blah, it's awesome, changing the world, awesome. But you, hey, hold, slow, simmer down, simmer down now. Wait, wait, wait for my presence. And I just think that's a good word for us. Because I think sometimes we get the vision and then we get ahead of ourselves. Yeah? Or we get the vision, and then all of a sudden we begin saying, where are the people to make the vision happen? Here's the vision. Ah, vision, 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 vision. Hey, you're talented. Come on, get on this train. You're talented. Hey, get on this train. You're not talented. Don't get on this train. I wasn't pointing at anyone. And we begin building around people. We begin building around the person. But this is a different model. This is a radically different model. Jesus says, wait. Wait for, wait for what? Wait for my presence. My presence is going to come into you. And then your kingdom assignment is going to be blowing up from within. In, the intel is going to come from here. The Holy Spirit of God. Where? In you. Hey, you want more of God? Guess what? You don't have to go to a conference. Unless you got some serious, you know, block, you know, Hey, you want more of God? You don't necessarily need a dude. You need a revelation. Guys, this is a revelation. This is not head knowledge. This is not, you, you can't even get this from me telling it right now. Like, you need Jesus to come to you. That you would know that you are loved, that he loves you. That he's got a plan for your life. That he can be trusted. He, that he actually trusts you. Hey, are you frustrated? Did you think you'd be a little further along by now than where you're at? Making a little more money than what you're making? Have a little more friends? Have a little less wrinkles? <laughs> like, has life not, has, has this thing not been going according to the plan that you made? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lay your plans down at the feet of Jesus and just say, Jesus, 
It's not about my plans, it's about your presence. I just want your presence. And as I engage in your presence, as I engage heaven, the transformation of the earth, the blueprint of heaven, that will be revealed in me, but that's, that's secondary. It's all about your presence, and this is what Jesus says. Wait. Wait for what? Wait for me, because I'm coming back, but it's going to look different. And I'm not coming back to be with you. I'm coming back to be in you. Now, you guys like that, but these guys didn't. Because look it, the next thing that they say, Jesus just told them, they don't, it's like these guys don't even get it. They just heard that they're about to get baptized in the Holy Spirit with a radical, with a radical encounter that they've never... And what do they want to do? They want to talk about politics. Do you see that? And immediately, verse 6, they say... So does that mean that now is the time that Israel is going to become a a liberated nation? So, like, do you see that? So Jesus is talking about the kingdom, but they they are interpreting it as the kingdom of Israel. But Jesus is actually referring to a different government. Jesus is actually referring to the government of heaven and its invasion into the earth Not through a nation, but through a prototype people called the kingdom of God, the people of God, or the body of Christ. And what's so so incredible about this is that still to this day, we can have an incredible conversation about revival, and then people will turn it into a conversation about politics. Why? Why? Because if you don't have Jesus, where else is your hope? That's why, there's, that's why there's so much hope deferred in this country. If you don't have Jesus, where, where, else, where else are you going to find peace? And if there's confusion and calamity and lawlessness everywhere you look, what else are you going to do? You're going to have to riot. You're going to have to rage. You're going to have to rise up. You're going to have to go crazy. Why? Because there's so much calamity. Right? But here's the thing. If you have Jesus, the radical message here that they weren't getting is that this kingdom is literal. This kingdom is physical. This kingdom does have laws, decrees. This kingdom does have a a, a judicial system. And this thing, because where do you think we got our system from? Our system is a, is a just a mere reflection of a heavenly system. And so the question is, why are you here? Why are you alive? Let me suggest to you this. The book of Acts doesn't end with, and they all lived happily ever after. And then a little fairy comes up, you know, ding, and the screen goes, the end. That's not how the book of Acts ends. The book of the book of Acts ends with to be continued. So for the next two years, as we read this, we're not just engaging with a historical document. We're engaging with an invitation to pick up where. The Holy Spirit left off in a generation and in a region. There's an invitation to go back to some places where some people missed the mark. There's an invitation to go back to some places in the church where what was very intimate and very raw and very real got hijacked by Constantine system that what was once an illegal faith that would get you killed all of a sudden became this very weird political greedy sexual institution that we are still in the church railing against to try to get back to a true form of Christianity a true form of what would it look like if Jesus was walking the earth right now and then we can declare he is. He is. He is. That Jesus is walking the earth right now. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to begin building a theology for revival. 
not with something abstracted from Darren, but from the book of Acts, declaring that the book of Acts is not only our origin story, kind of where we came from, but it is a model that worked then and it'll work today. And the model is this. You have a people of God that begin to engage with the Holy Spirit of God. And as they do, the Great Commission will come alive in such a people, and all of a sudden, our declaration will be this, for Seattle Revival Center, right? For God so loved the world that He gave Seattle Revival Center, that He would give us to people, places and things, that He would give us to nations, that we could come and bring a revelation of Jesus Jesus, Jesus the Christ. Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever. Guys, we're about to have an encounter with a revelation of the authority of Jesus. That when you say that Christ Jesus, the hope of glory, dwells within me, you would know that wherever you go, that you carry the hope to solve hopeless situations. Even things that go beyond your grid. Even things that go beyond your understanding or even things that go beyond your education. That when you have a revelation of your authority in Christ Jesus and the authority of Christ Jesus within you, that you know that nothing is no longer an accident, but now the steps of a good man, the steps of a righteous man, the steps of a righteous woman are being ordered of the Lord. And the Lord is ordering your steps. He is ordering your steps. He's ordering your conversations. He's ordering your relationships. And He's it's time, it's time, it's time to believe in me. It's time to believe in me, to hold on to me, to love me, to see me, and to know me. It's time, it's time, because your story, the journal that you're holding, is going to start looking a lot more like the book of Acts. Instead of some sort of weird, childish, fairy, you know, vampire novel, where, you know, one minute I'm in love with this person, and I was in love with that person, fired from this job, and fired from that job, in. Why, why are you alive? Why are you alive? Why is your heart beating? Do you have a reason to live? Do you have a reason to die? Because our origin story, where we came from, it cost these guys everything so that we could be here right now. And I was just thinking about it this morning. The blessing of being born here. I had, to my knowledge, I had nothing to do with that. I don't think I was in heaven as a spirit being, and we all drew straws. And I got sent to Renton, and someone else got sent to Zimbabwe. I don't think that's how it worked. Do you even get that? I was thinking about this morning in my office. I get to preach about Jesus. We get to sing to Jesus. It's not illegal to declare Christ Jesus on the earth, and yet we feel so shut down. We feel so cramped. And sometimes we don't even pray for the sick because we don't really even know if they're going to get healed. That's about to change. That's about to change. That is changing. That is changing. Let's wrap it up. Check out the end. This is what Jesus says. Verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And then, and then this is where Jesus gives us the blueprint for the rest of Acts. And you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, even in Samaria. It was exciting up to that point. They're like, Judea, hoo, 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 hoo. Samaria, hoo, 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 hoo. Maui, hoo, 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 hoo. Samaria, hoo. Little Jewish humor. And then where? To the ends of the earth. And that's what we're going to see as we study. This thing's going to begin expanding, growing, transforming. 
and beginning to cover the earth until in 2017, here we are engaging with our story, our scroll, our blueprint, engaging with what's in the Father's heart for Seattle, for this region, for this coast, for the West Coast. Yeah? yeah. Here's my question. You want in? Because some of you, you're not. You're not in. And some of you, you think, what, do, what does it take to get in? Like, do I got to be good? Does that mean I got to, like, does that mean I got to stop swearing? You know, does, that, does that mean I got to quit my poker club? Like, what, what does that mean? In, in, in. What rules are you giving? No, no, no. This is my question for you. Is he in you? Is Jesus in you? Religion has lied to us. Religion tells us that good people go to heaven. That's a lie. Forgiven people go to heaven. The Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That means that Darren's not a pastor because I was good enough or smart enough or good looking enough, even though that helped a little. I get to engage with the plans and purposes of God because of grace. All had sinned. Yeah, I had so much sin. But whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can be saved this morning. He comes into you. You come into Him. Now you're an insider. Now you know things. Now you start growing. This thing's not a self-help movement. You've been there. You've tried that. If you nail it, you just become pompous and proud. And if you fail at self-help, then you just feel like a total failure. Relate? Look, if you need help, you need Jesus. And he's here. He'll come into you. He'll be your best friend. And I, this ain't no lie. Look at me. He'll save you. Literally, literally, he'll save you. He'll save your marriage. He'll save your kids. Those are big claims. Yep. He's either a savior or he's not. Jesus, is, he's in the business of saving lives. Saving people. Everyone bow your head, close your eyes, no looking around, no peeking. If you need saving, if you need Jesus as your Savior, with no one looking around, I want you to all put up your hand right now, three seconds, right now. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You need Jesus as your Savior. Awesome. Guess what? It's not that he's coming. It's that he has come. And now he's going to make his home inside of you. Are you ready? Everybody, would you just put out your hands in front of you as if you're going to receive a gift. Salvation is a gift. You receive it by his grace. There's no trying or acting. None of that. You just have to be you. Just honest and sincere. And just say, Jesus. I invite you to be my Lord, to be my Savior. I give you this thing that I call my life. I give you my storyline. Step into this story. I give you the pen. You get to start writing my storyline. In Jesus' name. Look at me. If you prayed that prayer, all your, all your sins, all your sins, you're forgiven, you're free, you're clean, you're loved, and you're gorgeous. True story. We're going to finish the service by engaging with communion. So if the guys would come, and as they come, just begin to prepare your heart for an encounter with the Lord.
We declare we are the body of Christ. Born for such a time as this. And we take this moment with the Holy Spirit to examine our hearts. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for your grace and your kindness that you've shown towards us. Thank you, Lord, that while we're still yet sinners, you died for us. That you who knew no sin became sin so that we could become the righteousness of Christ Jesus. So right now, we choose to repent. To repent of unforgiveness. Stuff that we've been holding on to in our hearts. We repent of bitterness, hostility, resentment, discord, and division. We repent of heart postures that undermine and cut down that reduce and weaken others. And we choose right now to forgive and to release them into your arms. We choose to forgive them. We declare they know not what they do. We ask to forgive them, Father. They know not what they do. And we choose 
to turn away from bitterness and unforgiveness and to lean into mercy, to lean into grace. To lean into your arms, Father. We thank you, Lord, for that release in this room right now. From the, from the release of the hostility of the past, Father. And, and, and entering into mm, the freedom that can only be found in forgiveness. We declare from this day forward, we will no longer curse those who have hurt us. But we will bless them. We engage with the blood of Jesus, which is the very DNA of God. We embrace the transforming power of the body and blood of Jesus. We embrace, we grab a hold of the record and the dimensions of the kingdom of God released into our bodies by the blood of Jesus. We engage with that DNA record, the perfect record of Christ Jesus, and we apply it to our bones, and we speak to our bones and to our marrow, and we command it to live. Just go ahead and declare life over your body in Jesus' name. We apply the blood of Jesus. And we believe we are being transformed into the image of Jesus. We declare transformation over our genetic records. We apply the blood of Jesus to transform all impure genetic material, even going back to Adam, and we declare, be transformed. We apply the blood of Jesus to all iniquitous genetic patterns. We declare of ourselves, be cleansed, be loose, be free. Come out from all demonic oppression and possession. We belong to Jesus. We belong to Jesus. We are filled with His presence. We are filled with Him. Whoa. We declare we are the body of Christ. And we say yes to our responsibility. Let us not only represent your name, but let us represent your kingly power, your beauty, and your authority on the earth. <laughs> Go and take a moment and just receive that right now. There is life in this room. It's life abundantly. It's transforming life. It's redemptive life. It's restorative life. It's the kind of life that can bring liberty to every area of your heart. I just speak liberty, life, life, life assignments, life assignments, life assignments, health, 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 wholeness, 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 wholeness. Vitality, refreshing. Receive what you need right now. Yeah, receive what you need right now. Oh, refresh. Encouragement. I speak encourage. Let courage be added unto you. Grace and peace be unto you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Ah, Shabbatakiriya Sororo Kiriya Sarada Harada Kororo. I declare a new day, a new season. I declare resurrection life. I declare all fear, it must go. I declare life assignments to your body, life assignments to your mind, life assignments to your will, life to your emotions, life, life, life to your spirit, life, life, life to your soul, life to your physical body. Oh, shut up. Even miracles right now. Miracles right now. Oh, popping off through this room. Miracles, 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 signs and wonders, signs and wonders. Oh, we declare the glory of the Lord, the glory of the Lord. Oh, we declare the majesty of our King. Oh, we declare the authority of the name Jesus. Blood conditions. We speak to your blood to come into alignment right now. To come into alignment with the perfect record of the blood of Jesus. 
with the name of Jesus. We speak to every blood disorder in this room. Yet from sexually transmitted diseases to diabetes right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We speak to your blood to come into alignment with the perfect record. Wow, wow, wow. I declare healing over you right now. Healing, healing, healing. That healing realm. Shadahiya. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just declare the fire of God. The fire of God. The fire of God. I just declare the fire of God over precancerous cells. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just rebuke the spirit of cancer right now in this room. I rebuke the spirit of cancer. Yeah, I rebuke every, anything cancerous within your body. Anything that the doctor is keeping his eye on. Let that fire come right now. Let that fire come right now. Let it begin to burn, burn, burn. Let that fire come. Let it burn in your body right now. Let it burn those cells, those cells right now in Jesus' name. Let it burn, burn, burn. Fire, 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 fire. Fire. Transform, reform, 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 reform. Fire right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This is the time of this when we just engage with at the Lord's table. There's freedom at the Lord's table. Oh, there's freedom. There's victory at the Lord's table. Le yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me speak to warfare that's been going on way too long. Warfare, assignments that have been going on way too long. I just speak that war is over as of right now. Every demon associated with every battle that you've been facing day in, day, I say that battle's over. It ended at the cross. That battle's over. I declare freedom. I declare clarity, clarity of mind. I declare clarity of focus. Yep, receive it. It's by His grace. You just receive it right now. You receive it. I, I just, I see, I see peace. I see shalom. I see tomorrow's going to be, today's going to be radically different. Tomorrow's going to be radically different. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Just receive His peace right now. I just sense the peace of God coming into this room. Oh, shut up the key. Just receive His peace. His peace. Yeah, His peace. Yeah. Blessed are the peacemakers. You're a peacemaker, not a peacekeeper. Your job isn't to keep the peace, it's to make peace. Father, we thank you that your spirit is making peace in situations all through this room. Is making peace. In, yeah. Yeah. Any area of your heart, any area of your soul where there's not peace, allow him to come right now, right now, right now, right now and bring peace. And bring peace. And as we engage at the Lord's table, and as we partake of these elements, Please don't partake in just a place of tradition. Partake in a place of revelation. Imagine you were one of the disciples at the table. Imagine you were partaking with Jesus. Imagine Jesus comes and says to you, comes and says to you, this is my body. This is my body. Imagine taking that bread and thinking, this is his body? I don't get it. Imagine taking the cup and hearing, this is my blood. Imagine that. That would baffle you. But we've heard this over and over and over in the church. So we, we just come from a place of tradition instead of revelation. But as we receive it this morning, I want you to receive the elements today from a place of revelation. That you are receiving His body into you. You are receiving His blood into you. That on the night the Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. And when he did, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. Let's partake of the bread together. And in the same way, he took the cup. And he said, this is the beginning of a new covenant. This is my blood. A new era, a new world. Take and drink. For as often as you take this bread and you take this cup, you are proclaiming the Lord's death until he comes. Let's partake of that together. 
Would you stretch out your hands? Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your life assignment. We speak to any, 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 anything that's been framed up against this young woman that would like to take her life. We command a life assignment right now. We speak a life assignment right now. And no weapon formed against her will prosper. The battle is the Lord's. Father, we thank you for your healing touch. We loose your healing touch right now. In Jesus' name, we loose your healing touch. Ha 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 Right now. Ha 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 ha. Yeah. Ha ha ha. Right now. Ha 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 ha. Whoa. In Jesus' name. Let that fire come. Let that fire come. Right now. Right now. Burn. 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 Burn from the top of her head down to the soles of her feet. We testify the Lord is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Father, in Jesus' name, we loose your healing touch right now. We loose. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I brought oil today. I don't know. I didn't know why, but there's a. I brought, and I don't bring oil. Can you bring me that oil? Because this is, this is a biblical mandate that bring the sick and the elders of the church would lay hands. Yeah. What's your name? Stephanie. Stephanie? I have a return of aggressive cancer. Aggressive cancer. And I'm having life-saving surgery this week. To okay. Save my life. All right. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Uh, Stephanie, is it? Stephanie? Stephanie, we declare the plans and purposes of God over you. We declare that, that scroll, you are the poet, poetry of Christ Jesus, and there's nothing that can snuff you out or take you out before your time. We just declare it's not time yet, so we just declare a miracle, a miracle, a miracle, a miracle. We declare life and life abundantly. We declare that life assignment, and I just speak to every fear, every assignment of fear to go. All fear, out, 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 all fear, go, go, go. Go, 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 go. And Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for touching her body. I believe you're touching her body right now. I believe you're visiting every cell right now. I believe that you're, that you're healing each and every one of those cells. We thank you, Father, for your fire. That's, yeah, your fire, your fire, your fire, your fire. Burn every cell right now. And, ah, yeah, burn every cell, each and every cell right now, each and every cancerous cell. We command it to go. We command it to go. We command it to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We will, we will believe the report of the Lord. We will believe the report of the Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whoa, what are you feeling in your body? Peace? That's Jesus? Yeah, give me your hands. He's not done with you yet. He's not done with you yet. No, no. He's not done with you yet. Yeah. Now I just speak to that peace. You know, he is the Prince of Peace. I just speak to that peace to increase. To increase. I, I pray that even as you leave this room, that that peace would go with you and that that peace, that that peace would increase. Yeah, that that peace would increase. Yeah, I don't think it was an, uh, an accident that we went after cancer here. I, I didn't do that in the first service. I didn't know you were in the service. He has his eye on you. He has his eye on a sparrow. He's got his eye on you. He's got his eye on you. You know, you are surrounded with a great cloud of witnesses that are cheering you on. And you're surrounded by a church that's cheering you on. We are cheering you on. We are cheering you on. That the heavens and the earth, they're cheering you on. We're going to make it. 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 Yeah? So I'm so glad that you're here. This is just a God deal. This is just a God thing. So we're going to hear from you this week, all right? We're going to hear, we're going to hear a good report this week. Six to eight weeks. What yeah. day do you go? Uh, Wednesday or Friday. They have the um, do reconstructive surgery. It's bigger than I thought it would be. Okay. It, um, I was in remission for less than five months, and it came back. And it was I'm sorry. One more time. Uh, my my brain. What I day? Was in what day? Remission. What day? Are you? Um, Wednesday or Friday. We okay. Out Wednesday or Friday. All right. Everyone got your journals. <laughs> Write down Stephanie. Write down Wednesday and Friday. You're going to be praying for her, and we are going to be believing for a good report, for an amazing. 
report. We're with you, Stephanie, praying for you. Isn't this awesome? Isn't God good? I love the way that God sets things up. If you need prayer for anything, we want to stand with you, okay? So just come and put your toes on the line. Our prayer ministry team will pray for you. You need prayer for healing. You need prayer for encouragement. It doesn't matter what it is. Come and put your toes on the line. We'll pray with you. We'll stand with you.